Now then, as they say in Yorkshire, I fixed a set of Christmas lights yesterday and I thought I'd do a bit involved actually in the end, so I thought I'd do a quick video on how to do it, just in case you need to do one. So I had this set of Christmas lights here. Uh, with this, you can, you can hear that, it's knackered, isn't it? So uh, it wasn't working, it was broken basically. So I took this apart and found the circuit board here. See, it's broken, exhibit A. That's a circuit board inside. So you'll see what this does is it facilitates all the different um, flashing modes and all that. So you turn that round and it flashes or it, you know, flashes slowly, flashes quickly and all that kind of stuff. Now, I'm not bothered about all that. I'd rather just have them on constant. So when this was broken, I thought, well, I'm not too worried because all I need to do is kind of bypass this and supply power to the bulbs in the right way to get them to light and they'll light constantly. Now if you wanted, it's only slightly broken that, so if you wanted, you could do a bit of soldering there, put a bit of wire on and reconnect the components to where they, they used to be connected on the circuit board. You could, the bit that's missing was in the box, so you can see that. But I couldn't be bothered doing that and uh, I don't want the flashing anyway, so we're all right. So you can see, this is the power input, that comes from the transformer, which is there. Now this is, uh, this is a 24 volt, so this set of lights is 24 volts and that becomes important later when you're looking for bulbs. I'll come back to that. So this is the input and it's AC, alternating current, not DC. So we've got live and neutral, not positive and negative. So we've got live and neutral coming in there. And this is the output to the bulbs. Obviously that was connected to the bulbs. And you can see there's two wires coming in and five going out. Now these incandescent bulbs, they're wired in such a way that they share the voltage from the source. So this is a set of 80 bulbs and if there's a set of five wires coming out, what it means is there are four strings of bulbs wired in parallel with one common neutral. So these are the lives going out, the four lives and a common neutral coming back. Now, as it happens, it doesn't really matter which way around you wire an incandescent bulb, it'll light anyway, because it's alternating current, so the, the current's going like that. But just for ease of ease of use, this, this is how we're gonna think of it, the language structures it better. So, the bulbs themselves on a string are wired in series. So these bulbs share the voltage that, that's supplied to them. So, with 80 bulbs, we've got four strings going out in parallel. So that's four strings of 20 bulbs. So all we need to do in order to connect them directly to the transformer, so that we get them on constantly, is figure out which of these cables is the common neutral and separate that from the four lives which go out to the bulb strings. And the way to do that is if you look on the back, you can follow the circuit around and you can see that one of these, and you, if you have a look at the circuit there, and you look at the componentry on the other side, you can find which one goes directly, more or less directly, might be through a resistor or a capacitor or whatever, uh, to one of these wires coming in. So you can figure out that, that, that it's a neutral. Now, now probably they've made this circuit board in the most efficient way. So it turns out that our common neutral is this one. Uh, and it's closest to the neutral coming in, which makes sense if you're building a circuit board. So we know that that's a common neutral, and these four go out to the four parallel strings of bulbs. So what we need to do, on the bulb wire coming in, what we did is separate this off, and we cut those wires, stripped them, connected them all together. And what we ended up with is this. So we traced back uh, the neutral and the lives back to the transformer so we knew which was which and handily the cable's got a white and a, and a black. So the lives are all on this side and the common neutral goes to this side which goes back to the transformer. So that's what we've done, um, we'll plug it in, see if they're working. So super cool, we've got working bulbs, nice one. Now you may find that they still don't work. Now, these ones don't have a fuse bulb. Some of these uh, old style uh, bulbs have a, a fuse bulb on one end. Now, this type doesn't because it, it's fused in the transformer. 
So if any of these bulbs go in this particular set, all the bulbs in their string go off. So if I pull this one out, you'll see in actual fact that these, uh, some of these bulbs go off. So you see that, so out and I'm gonna plug it back in. There you go, they go back on. So because they're wired in series, so anything in series, this, this makes the connection and you can see in there, there's only two wires going in. So this is purely in series. Now some of these will have three and they actually have a little thing in there which uh, causes a short circuit if one of the bulbs goes. Um, they're the type that have a fuse bulb in one end. Um, that isn't this type. So the next step, once you've done this, you may find they don't light at all, but as long as you've got the wires the right way around and you've done your analysis of your circuit board correctly, the circuit itself should be all right. So if the lights aren't coming on, it means that a bulb in each string has gone. Now what happened with these is, some bulbs came on and some didn't come on. So the next step is really tedious. Uh, the ones that are on are fine, but anywhere, any, anywhere that you've got bulbs off, you need to test them individually with a multimeter. Now, it takes a little bit of while, but it is uh, it's satisfying when you've done it. So what you do, you pull the bulb out, and what I suggest is you do this methodically. So you go, what I did is I went from the, uh, the transformer end and I worked my way all along the string. Now obviously the ones that are lit you don't need to test because they're, if they're lit they're obviously working. Um, any others that you come to that aren't working you need to test. And the strings by the way are all interwoven so it's not like the first 20 are going to work and the next 20 don't because they're all interwoven as you go along. You can see it's all, all wound together. So this is dead simple, you get your multimeter you want to set it to resistance because what you're doing is you're testing um, for a lack of resistance. So if there's total resistance in the bulb, um, that means the bulb's gone because it shouldn't resist completely because the bulb's got a filament so it should make a circuit and it should be very low resistance. So set your multimeter to resistance. I've got two settings on there. I'm going to set it to the lower one which is 2000 ohms. And you see that's reading one. Um, what that means is there is complete resistance in the circuit. So there is no circuit basically. If I touch these together, see it goes down to a very low number, 003 more or less. So that's just measuring the resistance in the, in the wires of the multimeter. So what you should find in a working bulb, and this is a working bulb, you should find there's a very low resistance across it. Now the wires coming out are absolutely tiny, right? So. Uh, you've got to be a bit careful how you place them I and mean, it could look like it's not working when actually it is. So you've just got to make sure you've got it, you make a good connection. So touch that to one side and this on the other and they are a bit fiddly. So there you go, you can see there's very little resistance in that bulb. So what you'll get is, a, a generally speaking, it'll be a varying number. The reason it's varying is because it's actually very difficult to hold these multimeter uh, prongs onto the, onto the bulb. You can buy bulb testers in actual fact where you just plug this into a tester which is connected to a circuit. So that's, if you've got one of them, that's obviously a lot better. Uh, but I don't have one of them. I've just got a multimeter, so that's what to do. And uh, we know that's working. So anything, any bulb that's working, just pop it back in. So there it goes, uh, light it up. Any that aren't working, take them out and if you've got spare bulbs, put a spare bulb that, that, that you know works, obviously make sure your spare bulbs work as well, put it back in. It may be that the string still doesn't light up and what that's telling you is there's another bulb that's out. So you need to go on and check any of the ones that are out all the way until the end of the string. Now, once you've done that, you might end up with several blown bulbs and not enough spares. Um, lamps, I should say lamps really, they're not bulbs. People tell me off for saying bulbs, I know that. Lamps, for the pedants out there. Um, so you might have not enough lamps to put back in, you might need to order some. Now, you might not be seem all that straightforward to get the right ones. So what you need to do, 
uh, to make sure if you've got this it will give you the manufacturer on there so you're halfway there if you can get the manufacturer now sometimes on these it'll give you a bulb type like a g1 or an a1 or something like that and all you need to do is order bulbs of that type this is pretty old um, and there's no bulb type on it at all so what i had to do is, is figure out the voltage of the bulbs now pretty easy to do you need the the, the voltage of the bulb and you need the current rating so the first thing to do is look at the voltage output from the transformer. That particular one was 24 volts. So what you need to remember, there's 80 bulbs in this set, but there's four strings of 20 bulbs wired in parallel. So in order to get the correct voltage for the bulb, you divide 24 by 20, because the ones that are in parallel any, anything in a string wired in series shares the voltage if it's in parallel it'll get the same voltage so work out how many strings there are and divide the total number of bulbs by the number of bulbs in each string and then divide the voltage from the transformer by the number of bulbs in each string so in this case it was 24 divided by 20 which is 1.2 so these are 1.2 volt bulbs to determine the power rating for the bulb you get the power output from the transformer which on that one is given as 12 watts you can also get the voltage and the current uh, and do it that way and calculate the power from there which is voltage times current it gives you the power um, so that's 12 watts divided by all of the bulbs because that all of the bulbs will share that current so it's 12 watts divided by 80 which i think from memory was 0.144 watts or 0.15 watts uh, and that's what these bulbs were uh, so order up your bulbs if you can get them i got some on ebay yesterday put them all in and you've got a working set of bulbs hope that's helped somebody watching the video um i got really carried away with it yesterday i had better things to do to be honest but i don't like throwing stuff away so i just had to get it done so i thought i'll make a little video about it Thanks for watching, Merry Christmas, give us a thumbs up and a like and all that caper and uh, have a nice Christmas drink. See you soon.